All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. Uh, the name of the video is uh, Let's Talk About Being Armed and Black. Okay, let's let's talk about it. All right, this is coming from my bow of the fifth column, guys. Huh. Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. Starting off tonight with a story so we can head some stuff off in the comments section from the Second Amendment crowd. All right. Um, okay, so 10, 15 years ago, something like that, okay. I was at the range. When I was at the range during this period of my life, I was angry. I was not having a good day. This was range therapy for me. Um, so while I'm there, <laughs> a rookie cop with the county starts walking down the line, checking serial numbers on guns. Just was not in the mood to deal with it. Closed my case. And when he got up to me, he you know, kind of indicated he wanted to search it. And I told him, no, we had a quick back and forth. He put his hand on the case like he was going to do it anyway. My pistol was sitting on the bench in front right. of me. It had a mag in it, but the slide was back. And I put my hand on it. And he put his hand on his gun belt and radioed for backup. And we just sat there and stared at each other, waiting for backup to arrive. When Bro, really quickly, guys, I've never been in a range and this has happened to me. I'm just gonna let you know right now. Like I wouldn't, I mean, I don't think I would like turn it down, right? Because I absolutely would like for someone who has a firearm that is not theirs to not have it, right? I would love that uh, to happen. Um, I'm not sure that I would like turn it down. I don't mind like that, but um, you know, he's, he's qualifying it by saying that he had a bad day. So, okay. And back up a ride, Sergeant rounded the corner, gun out, ready to go. And he saw it was me and he did that bow again um at this point in my life i was what let's just say well known to law enforcement okay uh he did what a good cop does walked up and diffused the situation with a joke you know he asked the guy he's like what's going on he's like this dude said he's gonna shoot me if i open his case i don't think he said that and did you say that? sergeant looks down the range at the target i was shooting at looks back at him he's like well i wouldn't open a case then you know everybody laughed the, the rookie cop got a, a talking to explaining that he can't do this. And then the sergeant turned to me and explained that I should know better. At the end of the day, nobody got shot and my case didn't get searched. Um, what if I had been black? Okay, I see what you did here, bro. Right, because uh, I see what you did here. I see what you did. Let me explain. When I say that I've never seen anything like this, I'm not sure if the response would have been the same. I'm actually not sure. Um, I think in the range that I, I actually regularly frequent, um, I am so known there that I highly doubt that anything like that would actually happen, right? Um, but if it was like someone else who, I don't know, went to the range for the first time that day and like all the cops in the in that area literally know me because we shoot side by side, right? I let them borrow my like, my target stickers so they can put over their paper so they don't have to go buy another one. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Here it is. Um, I literally train at a police shooting range. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, that's just my specific experience. But now I've been to a couple of other ranges that were absolutely terrible, terribly maintained. And maybe these ranges um, may bring in different types of people. And that may be it. Um, you know, I don't think that it has anything really much to do with the color of my skin again, because I'm probably the only person that looks like me in that range. It's going to be honest, right? Um, and, I, and I have personally never had any issues, at least. But I cannot say that that's, that, that experience is the same experience for someone else, right? You wouldn't be hearing this story right now. Man killed at range. I don't know. Okay. Bro. So I got questions, a few actually, from black people who want to start gun clubs for black people. And one of the gun clubs I am in is basically a black gun club, bro. And I told that story to remind the Second Amendment crowd that it's not the same. It is not mm. the same. You know, uh, you're saying, well, they don't have to do that. It's their right, it's our right. If they do the same things we do, they'll end up dead. Right now, 
they're, they're trying to flex their rights, advocate for themselves, and just get law enforcement used to the idea that a black person can be armed, and that's not a reason to shoot them. So, Guys, really quickly, I don't want to keep stopping because I want to give my pretty much experience as a black male that is, honestly, guys, consistently always heavily armed. I mean, And I mean, bro, wait a second. Bro, without moving, okay, without moving, bro, throwing knives, right, uh, a short sword, right, <laughs> nunchucks, guys, oh, uh, what is this, um, Glock 34, right, just, this is literally just to qualify what I'm saying here, guys. All right. My experiences are different than what he's saying, right? Um, I understand that potentially, most likely, maybe the vast majority of like black Americans that walk around that are armed. And I, uh, you know, and again, um, at times I do open carry. Um, you know, I, I get it. The gun crowd are going to be like, why are you open carrying? You're, you're going to be the first person. I get it, bro. All right. Um, but I do. Right? I mean, I, I open carry in the bank, guys. Um, I've never had these issues, guys. Um, I've walked past cops where they, they've seen my gun and they've just been like, whatever. Right? Um, like, literally, whatever. You're American. Move on. Right? Um, so, so, again, this is just not my very specific personal experience. All right? Um, let's continue, guys. You can talk about the Constitution all you want, but if they have a bad encounter, the only use of the Constitution would be to pack the wound. It's not going to stop the bullets. It's very easy for us to be ideological purists when we're not going to be the ones getting shot. Okay, so now on to the actual advice. Okay, go ahead. All right. It took me so long to respond to these questions, guys, because uh, it's a lot more complicated than I thought at first. You've got to get the rules of engagement established. Sadly, you don't get to, to, to uh, determine them. The cops do. Right. And they may not tell you what they are. That's the first thing you have to fix. Get your club together. Get your group of guys together, whatever. Hold an event. And if you can, make it open carry, even though I normally don't like open carry events. Um, and I agree. I agree fully. Get... <laughs> Like Get the, the top law enforcement official in your jurisdiction there. Tell him whatever you have to to get him there. He's going to talk about gun safety. He's going to meet voters. Whatever it takes, you get him there. While he's there, you let him talk about whatever it is he wants to. And you ask him directly, what is the preferred thing that law enforcement wants us to do during a traffic stop or getting stopped on the street while carrying? And you get that on video and you put it online. You get... You get those rules of engagement set. Then that's, whatever it that's is. That's smart in general. I know it's not right. I know it isn't right. But you're trying to expand what is. You're trying to expand a right that you have that has been disused for so long. Okay. Law enforcement doesn't seem to realize you have it. So at this point, you just want them to get used to seeing black people with guns. That's it. If they tell you to put your hands on the roof of the car the second you get pulled over, do it. Just do it. Okay? Staging that event. No MAC-10s. No Tech 9s No Brico, Jennings, High Points. Um, and to answer one of the questions that came up, is the High Point really that bad? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bro. Nothing that is stereotypically associated with a gangbanger. Are high points associated to gangbangers? I guess because they're like so cheap, maybe. I mean, like a high point is a, such a trash gun. It's like, pl I mean, I guess if you have to, if that's the gun that you have to carry, right? And you know, in the unfortunate event that you have to protect your life from somebody and that's the firearm that you use and the police then take that weapon uh, and that weapon then somehow unfortunately never gets back to you do you really care that you lost two hundred dollars do you care that you lost 1300 on like a fn 509 tactical 
I guess that's the main question, guys, right? Um, that could be, I think that's the, the main selling point to probably a high point, right? Um, I've never had one. I've shot a couple of them. They, they've never jammed on me, guys, but I just can't. It's, they just feel like plastic. Right? They feel like toys, and that is not a good feeling to feel in your hand, okay? I'm just going to let you guys know right now, all right? It's not. Um, but I never knew or never even speculated that high points could be associated to um, this type of gang situation. Guys. Again, it's not right. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about right and wrong. We're talking about keeping you alive. Don't have any of that there. You don't want to reinforce that negative stereotype already. You'd be better off with everybody standing there with ARs. Okay. All the, the gun club that I'm in, I keep stopping, guys, again, because I keep trying to give you my very specific, um, you know, uh, opinion of what he's saying here, obviously, as someone who is always armed and I'm always black, right? Um, the gun club that I'm in um, that is basically a black gun club, I would say, I would definitely say that it's a black gun club, guys, um, because I, there's no one else but people that look like me in it. Um, there are no like guidelines that say you can't join it, right? But the, just for some reason, everyone in there absolutely looks just like me, uh, for the most part, in terms of skin tones, right? And um, AR is the, the rule is is the game, guys. I mean, everyone has AR fifteen. How how don't you have an AR fifteen? I think it's probably a better question, right? So uh, it is more likely that you're going to encounter us at least uh, um, at the range or any type of outdoor range or uh, any type of shooting event. You're going to see us with AR fifteen specifically. All of that advice was agreed upon. Everyone's going to say no high points. Was how you should dress. Uh, two people said dress as white as possible, using those exact words. Um, I disagree. I would go the other way with it. <laughs> I would stage it. So you have one guy that looks like he just got scooped up from jail. All right. For optics. And okay. one guy in a suit okay. and everything in between. Because while the idea of putting your best foot forward and everything, that sounds great. You don't want them to think that only black people only... dress like this are okay. Okay. That's you want them saying. used to the idea that however you're dressed, you can be armed because you're not going to be dressed the way they approve when you actually encounter law enforcement. So I, I would actually make sure you have people running the spectrum. Don't knock stuff over. Right. Um, okay. So th those are the key pieces of advice. And then from there, just make sure you do, you, 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 you comply. Um, not advice I ever thought I'd give, but anyway, <laughs> for what you're doing, you, you want to set the example for law enforcement that they can have an encounter with an armed black person and survive because even though it's not true, they've bought into their own propaganda and they're terrified. <sighs> okay. So now onto the, the more specific questions that were in these. Um, do we need to standardize? This was for the guy setting up the community defense stuff. Probably not. Uh, the Army does it because logistically it's easier to ship one type of ammo, one type of magazines, you know, than it is for, uh, for them to ship a bunch. In, in your situation, you should have six mags for your rifle. If you burn through 180 rounds during a community defense situation, the ability to exchange yeah. magazines with the buddy is it's probably not, gonna not gonna matter. Right. <laughs> I mean that that's, no. that's a lot of ammo. You're in especially a when you're talking about a group because right. it's hundred and eighty times however many people you have. Right. Um AR or AK doesn't matter. I know that's the that's a hot debate in the gun crowd. It's not and I'm gonna explain. All right. There's some people who are more refined and sharp, right? I think these people most likely enjoy the 5.56223 AR15, et cetera, AR platformed firearms, right? Um, or even even the super classy 458 SOCOM, super classy, these, these, are, these are classy people, right? Or then there are also some people who just like kicking doors in everywhere they go, right? Like instead of just you know walking in and gently pushing the door open and, and closing it behind you. No, no, no. These people like blowing doors off hinges, right? 
I'm trying to give you a, a visual picture of someone who loves an AR, well, an AK-47. That's generally the type of person. Don't get me wrong, I have both, right? Um, I prefer the AR because it's just more precise, it's straight to the point, but the AK-47 is just loud. And it's, it's loud and in your face and yeah, guys. <laughs> so definitely that's the argument. That's the debate. Which one is better? Which one do you prefer? I understand. I like them both, but I think that the, the AR 15 is probably a better platform um, for getting bullets down range on target. Okay. Cause that AK 47 is sloppy, bro. It's sloppy, big bullets. The seven, six, two is I don't have any right here. So, yeah, the 762 is a big bullet, bro. Big bullet, absolutely. But that 556 five, is a lot more straight to the point. That's it. There's no argument. I solved it. It does not matter. The AR is a little bit more accurate at a little bit further range. The, right. You'll probably never shoot it at anyway. The AK okay. is a little bit easier to maintain and a little bit more reliable. Well, then, well, yeah. But. Yeah. It's, it's going to fire no matter the modern what. modern versions of both of these, ne neither one of them is, is marked as, as the better weapon. They're both good platforms. Uh, and as far as standardization... You're trying to play both sides, bro. You're trying to play both sides right now. And that's going to kind of happen anyway, because once everybody starts shooting, you're going to find out half of them love the AR, half of them love the AK. Right. That's going to be what they have. It just is what it is. Right. Um, Why does every white person I meet tell me I should buy a 1911? It only holds eight shots. It's like they're trying to make sure we're out gone. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Okay. Listen, I'll talk about guns randomly, right? And someone will be like, you got to get a 1911. And I'm like, bro, I am not getting a 1911. I, I, I understand. I understand. But I don't want that, bro. I, there's no way. My, my Glock 34 holds 31 rounds. Why would I want that? Why would I want that, bro? Right? My, um, my, what is this one over there? Uh, my, my Canik TP9 Combat Elite holds 16. What do I need that for? Right? Bro, and then my, my CC Scorpion holds 60. I'm sorry to tell you, bro, keep your 1911. No disrespect. Right? I mean, hammer fire is cool. I think striker is better because it just is, right? I mean, listen, 1911 tried and true. I get that. I, you know, listen, if I wanted that, if I wanted that, I'd, I'd use my, my 38 special that I have back here, right? I don't use that, right? I, but also at the same time, I get it. More bullets, that, that's more for someone to miss. That means that they're probably overcompensating for the fact that they can't shoot. I get the whole logic behind it, right? Um, would you want eight well-placed, perfectly aimed shots or 33 potential misses? Or like, you know what I'm saying here? I get it. I, I, I hear the analogy. It, I, I get it. But I don't miss. All right? <laughs> I don't miss. So, so, so regardless, I'd rather 16 that I'm going to hit on target at least 97% of the times, bro. All right, rather than than eight and just be just out of luck having to worry about reloading in the middle of, of some some kerfuffle, bro. No, 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 no. Give me my striker fire masterpiece, please. Thank you. Okay, the 1911 is a, uh, it, it holds a special place in white people's hearts. <laughs> okay. It's called the 1911 because it entered service in 1911. It, it, it is a very old, design right and it stayed in military service until 91 i think um the, was, was the last one the beretta 92 fs so it basically every war movie that every every white guy's ever seen up until very recently has had the 1911 in it it is it, it's a staple one two world wars and all of that <coughs> the uh it is probably the crowning achievement of firearms design of the 20th century. It is now the 21st century. You have other options available. Strikers. If you don't like it, don't use it. Yeah, um, there are a bunch of 45 caliber pistols out there that hold more than eight rounds. But it, it's not that they want you outgunned. It's that they really 
really do they, like they that like that guy. <laughs> right, right. That the um, platform. Is there anything else we should know? Yeah, put a first aid kit in your car. Absolutely. Your attorney will thank you. You don't just carry a gun. You're prepared for all emergencies. Right. It's kind of like having a glove right. in your uh, car if you carry a baseball bat. Right. Your attorney loves that. <laughs> he spoke very loudly. Got to read between the lines here, guys. Obviously, read read very deeply between those lines. He spoke very loudly. Absolutely. Because make sure, if you do have to protect yourself, you grab the first aid kit and you save that person's life. All right? Or make an attempt to. Um, and you may actually need it. I'll also remember that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what you guys are doing, I think it's great. You're trying to expand the rights that are being exercised, but it is very, very dangerous. And in the beginning, until law enforcement's attitude changes, you're, you're going to have to be very careful. You're going to have to be extremely careful. I mean, and you are not going to be able to get away with what your white buddy does. It's just, they'll kill you. They will kill you. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night. All right, bro. I appreciate this man, right? Because he has conversations, just interesting conversations. Um, he, I don't, you know, it seems like sometimes, specifically this one here is interesting because I am the person kind of that he's talking about, but I can also tell you that I've never experienced these things at all, right? Um, I've been carrying for a very long time. These cops see my gun, bro. It, I don't know, you know? Um, and I've never had this exact experience. I, I also don't get pulled over by police ever, right? Um, so I don't know. Like, I've never gotten pulled over with a, with a gun in my... No, I guess I have. Um, but not, like, on my person, right? Like, I was just leaving the range, and I was basically you know, all out of bullets, <laughs> right? Uh, so obviously I put my firearm back in the um, in the actual um, the, the overall rifle case, the bag that I was using. Um, do, you have any, do you have any weapons in the car? Yeah, in the back. Right, that's it. They're, they're, they're back there. Then obviously the, then, then obviously a cop walks around and he then he just stands, stands watching you and the bag, right? And it's just like, bro, would you rather just take the bag out the car? Listen, I'm gonna be honest. Bro, I, listen, I'd rather step out of the vehicle. Look, my gun is over there. I'm stepping out of the vehicle. You're gonna search me really quickly. Sure, I'll violate all my rights. It's fine, right? Just for your ease, right? I'll step out, sure. Do these things. You Now I realize I have no weapons. And that's the end of my answering any questions. Just be fully aware. I don't, I don't answer questions. That's not something I do ever, right? But I am absolutely not gonna say I don't have a firearm in a car when I do. That's that's just rule number one. I don't know if that's a, a universal thing, right? But um, yeah, and so um, and that's that's it. Just like speak to people how you, how you want to be spoken to. That's it. And if you realize that the police officer is speaking to you in somewhat of a hostile manner, maybe they had a bad day or something, that's when you generally treat them like babies. That's what I've learned, at least. Right? Um, I instantly will start treating. This I will insult the intelligence of this police officer without insulting the intelligence of the police officer, um, and I, that's one experience I can literally just tell you that I had, um, where this guy was just hostile for no reason, and that's when I'll start treating. I'll honestly, will speak to him like how I speak to my my son, and that's that tends to lower their their you know their opinions because then now they get the opportunity to feel like they are uh, on a moral high ground, right? They feel more intelligent than they may actually. Than they're, than they're, you know, than they think they are, right? They, it, it makes you, it lowers you and it brings them up mentally. They like that. I don't know. Um, or how about that? That that one specific police officer liked it. I'm not going to say that all these police officers are the same, obviously, because they're not. The one, because any other incident I've had was never as hostile as that one very specific incident that I had, right? Um, but all right, listen, my experience is this year. I'm a black male in America, right, with a gun. I didn't. I haven't experienced this, but I'm sure. Um, I guess depending on where you are in the United States of America, that experience will be absolutely different, right? Um, but all right, listen. You guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly, right?